Ladies and gents, welcome back to the workshop. Fabulous to have you here. As you'll remember, in the last episode, I finally finished my chuck modification to allow this number five true grip collet chuck to fit a standard 5C collet. It went pretty well, but there was one major problem. To tighten collets, I had to use. I had to use a screwdriver. <laughs> just shoving that thing in there and it just about turning the thing. Well, that is just no good. So today, we're going to make a chuck key. No, two chuck keys. Because not only do I have the collar chuck, no chuck key, but I've got a three jaw chuck. Yes, chuck key. From down here, we got a four jaw chuck. No chuck key. In case you're unfamiliar, because I was just a little while ago, a collet chuck is used where you want a greater degree of accuracy, and you especially want to be able to kind of hold small parts and quickly change the parts out without sacrificing your accuracy. A three jaw chuck is quick to use, because as you turn it, all the jaws close, but it's not super accurate. And a four jaw chuck is where you really, really want like incredible amounts of accuracy, and you need to really grip on things very tight. You. Uh, independently tighten these four jaws to get the thing centered perfectly. But it would seem, unless you're Adam Booth, that takes, it takes a little more time. I've just come up with some sketches of the parts that I need, worked out the measurements, and so now I need to pick the material. I know that I need 10 millimeter round, 20 millimeter round, 25 millimeter round, and 16 millimeter round. 25, 16, 10, 20. So we'll start doing some cutting. say we've been making some pretty good progress. Here are how the pieces are looking now. Scotch brighted them both up a little bit. Made a little groove where the end of our squaring needs to be, just so I can look at it as I'm milling it away. And speaking of milling it away, that indeed is the next step. We need a square on the end of both of these, and thankfully with the wonders of collet blocks this is going to be rather easy. 5C collet, same collet we're using in the collet chuck. We'll be able to hold on to this like that. We'll screw this bad boy on and tighten it up. Final tightening. My Pulling that out like that. And just like that, this will be able to set right there in the vise. We'll be able to mill, and I'm gonna mill across the back side, so that way the radius of my cutting tool here means that we're not creating any stress risers by having a sharp corner, as if I was uh, milling from the top, we'd get that sharp corner. And with each pass, I'll simply be able to take this out, turn it 90 degrees, and then go back in, take the next cut, and hopefully match it up perfectly. The best part is Adam, a bomb 79 on YouTube, a very, very good machining channel, I highly recommend, left a comment under one of my videos telling me to take this bad boy off, pop her in here, tighten it, and use it as a stop. Would you look at that? How cool is that? So now, we'll tighten up the vise, we'll take a cut, We'll loosen the vise, turn that 90 degrees, come back, tighten the vise, turn that 90 degrees, come back, tighten the vise. We'll be able to do all our milling, hopefully very nice and accurately, and very consistently. Thank you, Adam, very much. I'm just gonna use this piece of paper to find the edge of the material. Okay, so now I'm gonna set my DRO zeroed out. So I'm gonna take a 1.55 millimeter cut. Oh, you're kidding, I went the wrong way. So I'm at 1.55, I'm at minus 1.55, now I'm going to take a cut. So now, we'll take this out, turn 90 degrees. And now we'll take another cut. Turn it over. Woohoo, there we go. Right, let's see if it fits. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> there we go. 
This can come out. We can pull this collet out. Whoa. I can now take the 25 millimeter collet, throw that in, throw the other piece in. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Right, so I can, boom, pull that out. Now this collet block works perfectly for this application here, but we still need to get a hole in it. Well, I was just about to tell you that we can't do that with the collet block and we'd have to use a V block. But this works fine. Oh wait, no, I can't index the right orientation. So I could have used a collet block to hold it, but the issue with that is I can't tell where my, uh, where my square is and index to it. This is another way I could do it with a V block here. My worry is how rigid this whole setup is, clamping it with you know simply some eight millimeter bolts. And the other problem with this is getting a chuck close enough to these is gonna be very difficult. You'll notice a little piece of copper to hopefully save marring the piece. So here's another way that I think I can do it that's gonna be a little bit more of a rigid setup. I really do think this is gonna require every ounce of rigidity I can get. Clamp this puppy in the vise like this. Hang on a second, this looks like it would be even more rigid. Okay, so we got it set up, tightened down, indexed, and I am now exactly where my hole needs to be. Used an edge finder to find the edges here. You'll notice that this is not what I've usually used for this application. I have been using a center drill, but thanks to your fabulous comments, I learned that that indeed is designed for the lathe and a spotting drill is better for uh, this type of application in a mill. The reason being the center drill here on the left is designed to make a hole to hold a live center as opposed to a hole to necessarily be drilling into. And the type of little divot that we're going to make with a spotting drill is a hell of a lot more suitable to aiding the entry of the drills that we're going to be drilling it out with. So, right, let's see how these things work. Well, that worked beautifully. I hope it's on center. That could be embarrassing if it isn't. Pull this out of here. It's my new favorite tool. Just going to drill through with a six mil drill, quarter inch or set. This is pretty hard steel. This is 4340. So I'm just going to switch to using coolant instead of just cutting fluid. Okay, we're through. So as I said, I haven't told you what material it is yet, but this is pre-hardened 4340 EN24. So it's some tough stuff. I really had to throw the coolant on there pretty aggressively. Well, there we go. Looks pretty centered to me as well. Great, this one's done. Gotta do this one. So, with those holes, the handles now fit on both these wrenches. Super exciting. But naturally, they don't stay on. We're gonna solve that with one of these. A little pin that we'll hammer in there. This pin's gonna go all the way through and stop it from coming out. But, obviously it needs to go through this. Smack bang in the middle from side to side as well. Now I do like that little uh, satin finish there with the scotch bright cloth. I think it looks quite nice. But I have just lately really, really been on a kick of this whole cold oxidizing method. So I'm gonna degrease these parts. And once each piece has been degreased, I'll set it in some water, rinse off the degreasant. So I've now switched out the dirty water and I'm pouring this cold ox bluing solution into this pan. Dish? Dish. And we can put the pieces inside. Really doesn't take long for a significant color change. Um, I'm gonna leave these things about kind of 20 minutes or so. I'm a little embarrassed, but I really probably should do you the courtesy of explaining what's just happened. So this morning when I was measuring my split pins there, to use as the fastening mechanism, I saw they were four and a half millimeters. And I said to myself, well golly, that's fantastic. I bet it's designed for a four millimeter hole. Because you see, it's split and I presumed that it probably just 
tightens up that much when you hammer it in. And then I proceeded to try and hammer it in for the final assembly and uh, didn't go too well. I even tried going to the press. I thought maybe it just takes a lot of pressure. And then I bent it under the hydraulic press, which is entirely expected, I'm sure. I can't imagine that I would think that that would have actually worked. So then after that, I begrudgingly took to Google, which frankly I should have done a while, while before. And I discovered the correct amount of clearance. Wasn't half a millimeter, a little more like 0.2 of a millimeter. So they are 4.5 millimeter split pins, and I drilled now a 4.3 millimeter hole. And would you look at that, just like that, I'm finished. What an unbelievably enjoyable few days this has been. I modified my collet chuck to be able to accept 5C collets, and I've made these tools. I'm really pleased I went to the extra effort to cold blue them. That extra uh, little half hour there has really made these feel and look like something that really I am just super proud of. So thank you so much for following on with this day. I hope you've enjoyed it, because I absolutely have, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow on the next episode. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're new. Love making stuff, love bringing you along, and I hope that it inspires you to get out into your own workspace, make some stuff, and enjoy the process, and try something completely new with it, because you're gonna really enjoy it. So thank you very much, and bye-bye.